and welcome to Aviation 101 with Laura. Today we're talking about a topic that is near and dear to my heart and that is about aircraft dispatchers and their duty time requirements. So I've even got my Pan Am mug here. Let's get started talking about duty time limitations, which are thankfully a lot less complicated than pilot regulations, which can be found in 14 CFR Part 117 for any kind of passenger carrying operations for um, air carriers. So 121.465, in summary, it covers domestic and flag operations only. If you're curious what that means, I have a 60 second video where I explain definitions of domestic flag supplemental. Supplemental operators do not have dispatchers. They have what's called flight followers. So there is actually no duty time period set. Uh, a, a supplemental air carrier can send its flight followers up for however long shift it wants to. There is no federal requirement under the FAA to limit their work time. So let's unpack for, this is again, domestic and flag operations. A lot of text here to unpack, but basically the airline has to establish a duty period for a dispatcher that lets the dispatcher get familiar with what's going on in the operation, whether any kind of delay programs, ATC issues and such, um, before they begin dispatching airplanes. Secondly, the dispatcher has to be on duty until either all the airplanes they're dispatching, and that means that they're flying and they're monitoring those flights, they have to remain on duty until those airplanes land, and, or, they are relieved by another qualified dispatcher or they go beyond the area that that dispatcher is responsible for. In the old days, an airline might have multiple dispatch offices across the United States and you might be responsible for certain areas as you had and they could fly out of your area, but this is really uncommon today. Um, from what I understand of operators. So basically the dispatcher needs to become on duty in time to get familiar with what's going on. Secondly, have to stay on duty until your airplanes land or another dispatcher shows up to take over. So the actual limit part says, unless the air carrier, there's some sort of emergency beyond control of the air carrier, you cannot schedule a dispatcher, again, at domestic or flag operators for more than 10 consecutive hours of duty. Now, I underlined that and the reason is because the word consecutive is important here. So you cannot schedule somebody for more than 10 consecutive hours of duty. It means if I report, let's make the time easy, at 0800, I cannot be scheduled to work past 1800. I like using 24 hour clock because it makes way more sense to me math wise. Okay, if a dispatcher is scheduled for more than 10 hours of duty in 24 consecutive hours, you have to give them what we call an intervening rest period of at least eight hours. So right off the bat, people read this and they get confused and they're like, wait a minute, you just said in part one of this area, if this reg says you can't schedule for more than 10 hours, how come you could be more than 10 hours? Okay, again, the important word is consecutive here. It is possible for a dispatcher to be scheduled for 10 consecutive hours of duty, but then it is also possible, and I'll unpack why in a second, a dispatcher could be scheduled to work more than 10 hours total of duty, not 10, more than 10 consecutive hours in a 24 hour period, which would require that rest period to happen. Okay, so essentially, somebody could be scheduled from 0500 to 1500. That is not unreasonable uh, amount of work. And then they go off. And so we have an off period. But the air carrier is kind of short staffed because we're trying to hire enough dispatchers. So we want them to come back on duty. They could do this. Okay, so 
1,500 hours, we get an eight hour rest period in the middle. So 1,500 to 1,600, 1,600 to 1,700, 1,700 to 1,800, 1,800 to 1,900, 1,900 to 2,800, 2,800 to 21, 21 to 22, 22 to 23. See, I can, I can do math. It helps with the 24 hour clock. So the person could come back on duty for 2,300 hours. Technically, once again, we could be scheduled for 10 hours because the air carrier provided them with my eight hour intervening rest period. Okay, so let's see, 2,300 to 2,400 be one hour and then plus another uh, nine hours technically this type of schedule would actually be legal. So 0, 0500 to 1500, that's 10 hours. So here we got 10 hours. And then we give them an intervening period. Uh, here's another 10 hours. Notice the dispatcher has been scheduled for more than 10 hours in 24 consecutive hour period. If we started that period at 0, 0500, uh, 0500 is in the middle of my second 10 hour period. And so the dispatcher was scheduled legally for more than 10 hours of duty in 24 consecutive hours. This schedule would not be very fun. I would not like this, but it's legal. Most airlines, not all, but a lot of them are unionized. So the dispatchers are going to have their own work rules. They're probably not going to have a schedule like this, uh, but like I say, we're talking about legalities here. We're not talking about necessarily what the real world actually does. Okay, there's a little bit more to unpack, but that right there, the scheduled for more than 10 and 24, that's what confuses people. Hopefully that helps with the explanation. All right, uh, the rest of the limitation says you have to relieve each dispatcher of duty with that certificate holder at least 24 hours during any seven consecutive days. So that sounds nice. Okay, you get 24 hours off every seven consecutive days or key the equivalent thereof during any calendar month. Okay, a calendar month means um, that period of time. So like beginning of September to end of September, that's a calendar month. Uh, so essentially what this says you have to give them this period of time off, but where the FAA says the equivalent thereof, that means you could be given 48 hours off every 14 consecutive days, or even 72 hours off every 21 consecutive days. So it's may seem great, but it's really not so great. And in fact, this regulation mirrors very closely the regulations for a airframe and power plant mechanic and their requirements to be relieved from duty as well. So I hope you enjoyed this one about aircraft dispatcher duty time limits. Check out my other videos for more dispatch rules, regulations, other things pertaining to part 121, 14 CFR.